Hi guys, welcome to So Janelle. I'm your host, Janelle So, opening the month of March with a Wonder Woman story. As we know, March is International Women's Month. And so this month, we're going to be talking to and about different uh, women. Of course, women comes in different forms, right, womanhood? There are moms, there are daughters, there are sisters, there are entrepreneurs, and a lot of inspiring stories of strength and courage going after their dreams, reaching the top. Those are the kind of stories that we want, of course. So Janelle is about immigration and representation. Today is no different, of course, as we talk to a mom first, who decided to pursue a career and found herself on top of an iconic landmark in Hollywood, California. Here is the story of Chef Valerie Castillo Archer. As a woman in this industry, it's very difficult. They don't look at the chef. They look at me as a female. Mm -hmm. They look at me as Asian and mm -hmm. Filipinas. I love to shout out at the top of my lungs, I'm the executive chef here. I mean, I came here on my first date, right? With my husband and I just, I don't know, I just, I didn't think at 50, I would have a career. I would have a job, but I didn't imagine that this career or this job that I thought would be a job would end up to be like this, to be here every day, to be the executive chef at Yamashiro. Chef Val, this interview has been, what, a year in the making? Yeah, I th you know, I think so, because we met about a year ago. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. This was before the world opened up, obviously. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when it opened up, you also shot up. Yes, Top I know. of the world, it's right? It's like skyrocketed, you yeah. know, breaks, yeah. I've been meaning to tell you this. Um, you are one of my heroes. Oh, thank you. Um, especially when I learned that you didn't really get to work until mm -hmm. after your kids were at school. Yes. or we're kind of more independent. Right. Tell me about that. As a mom, you, it's a struggle between you want a career, um, but then again, you want to be there for your kids. And for me, it was difficult because if I went to work, what's going to happen to my kids? Am I going to be there for them? And um, for my oldest son, I did go back to work and I missed out on a lot of things that I, I wanted to do with them, like his first steps, his first words, and you know, just things that the landmarks that I wish I was there for. And of course, my parents were there to take care of him. So I didn't feel bad, but it's just that bonding that I had with my kids. And my second child um, is a girl and she went through a lot of things in grade school, middle school and high school that she was bullied. And I was so happy that I did take that. I made that decision to just stay home with her because if I wasn't there, I don't know how she would have gone through everything and we're close now and if I had to do it all over again I would do the same thing because it, it just helped me and it allowed me to be a good mother to them and um, you know it's, it's just being them for them was the most important thing. You hit a chord right there. I was bullied. Wow. I was bullied in high school and it left a very deep scar yes. in me to the point where now I'm so protective of my children. Yes. You're overly sensitive. Like, yes. why is my child, like, is my child happy? Is my child, like, you know? You you basically pick up on everything mm -hmm. and you feel everything, even though when your kids don't say anything to you, you, yes. if they're not happy or they're not smiling, you're gonna think, okay, what's wrong? Are you okay? And when you're bullied, it doesn't go away. Yes. It's, a, it's like you said, it's a deep scar that stays with you forever. But it's more of you have that support mm -hmm. and it helps you know like my daughter can come to me anytime and talk to me and it's it's one of those things that it's hard to explain if you've never experienced it yes. because people don't understand and what my da daughter went through was really tough and it still affected her to this day and um I'm, i was just glad that i decided to be at home with them otherwise i don't know i, I it's scary for me to think that if i wasn't there what would have happened Right. And yeah. you've experienced some kind of bullying, some kind of bashing. Yeah. Yes. Because that's what it is when you're up there and especially in this era of social media. Yes. It's so easy to get love, but also to get hate. I mean, that's true. Um, there were things that were said and there's still things that are being said. And I used to read all my comments. I used to look or like well, people will send me things and say, oh, my God, so and so said this. And. I used to read it, but now it's 
I'm here and I don't want to take away any um, happiness or any experience that I've had. I'm so lucky to have people like you and friends and family that support me. And, you know, words, they do hurt, mm -hmm. but I can't control the negativity that people say about me. And the one thing that I can do is push forward. And, and the thing is, it's not just one person at the top. Everyone deserves to be on top. And I will share a space with anybody. It's like, you know, I love to help people. And the reason why I'm here is because a lot of the fans like you have helped and supported me. And I wish that, you know, people stop being mean, but I guess that's never going to happen. So uh, surround yourself with good people and just be positive. People see what they want to see, yes. right? Yeah, and they, they and, and, and even if you're meaning well, something can be misconstrued and right. you can't control that, right? But what you can control is your destiny yes. and that's what you've done. Yes. Tell us about that decision when you said, I'm going to go back to work. Why Yamashiro? And, and what was your journey from day one? from someone who came from home to this iconic landmark and you are the executive chef. Tell us about that decision when you said, I'm going to go back to work. Why Yamashiro? My youngest one is 16 now and I wanted to do something um, when they leave. I didn't want, you know, you, you have that an empty nest syndrome. And I, I looked at my mom and um, when we left, she not that she had nothing to do. It's just like, you know, she didn't pursue her career. She gave up her career as a teacher. And, you know, she stayed at home and, you know, she, she loved it. But I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, I don't know, do something. And I've always loved to cook. And I've always, I went to cooking school. I went to culinary school. I, you know, I did crochet. I did a lot of things, but I've never really pursued it. And I just wanted to do something. My friend actually said that, you know, Yamashiro is looking for a pastry chef. And I said, okay, let me try. And okay. And I was just, I wasn't looking for a full-time position. I figured I'm going to go there, work maybe nine to five, three days a week. How hard can this be? You know, mm -hmm. it's no big deal. But I didn't imagine that this career or this job that I thought would be a job would end up to be like this, to be here every day, to be the executive chef at Yamashiro. I never expected that. I mean, I came here on my first date, right, with my husband, and I just... I don't know, I just, I didn't think at 50, I would have a career. I would have a job, but you know, not a job where I would, that I love, that like every day to me coming here, when I walk through those doors every day, it's like my first day, I still have the same enthusiasm. I'm still excited. And every time I see people, it's like, I view this as my home. Mm -hmm. So when you have guests, you give them the best experience, whatever it is, you greet them and you're polite to them because you want them to remember you. And then of course I send them with Baon every day, right? So I don't think it's a job. I think it's just, I'm having fun. Right. You know, I'm enjoying my life and it's it's a great experience. And people are enjoying it too. You have single-handedly brought Yamashiro back on top. I feel like, especially for Filipinos, a visit to LA is not complete without a stop right. here, yes, right? It's yeah. become like a must-see tourist hotspot, right? Yes. But from a pastry chef, how did you become the executive chef. During the pandemic, everyone got let go. And um, I thought that, on the la I think it was like March 13, or we all had this conversation where guys were closing. We don't know we're going get to get back. We don't know what's going to happen. So I was, like I've said before, I was the last manager to be hired. So I figured, you, you know, know last to for us to go, right? Like, yeah. okay, that's it. This is done. You know, I had fun. And then the owners, called me and they said, you know, we would like you to stay, um, take care of the restaurant while we're closed. Think of something that we can do for to go because it's very difficult to do a takeout for fine dining in a box. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back and remember what I learned in culinary school. What do I do? What do I need to do? Dig up my grandfather's old recipes. And I wasn't expecting to be the executive chef. I had always expected to just run it until they find somebody right. to name executive chef because this has been my first job since being a stay-at-home mom. Come June. Um, of 2020? 20, 2020. Yeah, okay. I'm here, I'm thinking, okay, when are they gonna hire the next executive chef? Because I'm like, we're gonna be opening in two weeks. I had no idea. And so 
I was writing to vendors and I asked our director of operations, I said, do you mind if I just put executive chef on here because I'm writing to the vendors. I want to make sure that they know that, you know, this is somebody with the title. Right. Give you a little bit yeah. of respect. And yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just say, can I just put that temporary? Because that way, you know, until you find somebody and they told me, well, you are the executive chef. I'm like, what? You didn't even know. No. <laughs> right. no I it's just my life turned upside down. It was just more than just coming to work. I mean, I literally would go home, go to bed, get up and go to work. And it's been like that for the past two years. And it's it's an exciting feeling. It's like it's full of adrenaline. And it, it's like I said, it, it's just amazing to be in the kitchen. They see you and they see all the gloss. You have all the stars coming to you um, on social media, yeah. like tweeting about you or posting about you. But I'm sure there are struggles. What are your top three struggles? Well, um, first of all, I still think, am I doing this right? Because I've never worked at a restaurant. This is my first restaurant that I've ever worked at. And someone came to me and said, you know, he asked me, he goes, oh my God, this is great. You know, where did you come from? You know, what restaurant did you come from? I said, I came from home. He goes, where's that at? I said, my house, you know? <laughs> so that's one of the challenges that I don't have the experience as most chefs do. As a woman in this industry, it's very difficult. I got bullied when I first got here. Like, who is this person coming from the house and telling us what to do? They used to take their fingers and run it through my dessert. They like, yeah. One time I came to work and they cellophane wrapped my kitchen. I would ask for things and, you know, they wouldn't help me. And, you know, it, it, those kind of things. It's a struggle that maybe I'm not fit for this job because I'm not a man. I need to be a man to be able to understand and be able to give a command. And if I am bossy, I'm considered bitchy, yes. or maybe it's that time of month. Right. So there's a lot of stereotypes. and. Right. Having to deal with that, you know, you kind of like think to yourself, okay, maybe I'm not fit for this job. Right. Maybe I should just step back. But I look at my daughter who was bullied. And if I step back and if I, you know, decided not to pursue this career, then what are the, all the things that I've told my daughter? Right. You know, that didn't mean anything to her. So she basically tells me all the time, you can do this, mom. Don't worry. I have your back. From someone who came from home to this iconic landmark and you are the executive chef, she just says, be proud of yourself. So you've talked about being uh, targeted yeah. because you're a woman. Right. And this is good because it's it's uh, Women's History Month. Right. And of course, we're highlighting power women right. like yourself. Has there ever been a point of contention over the fact that you're Asian or you're Filipino? Has that ever been a target? Every now and then people will say, oh, she's Filipino. What does she know? Uh -huh. And they don't look at the chef. They look at me as a female, mm -hmm. they look at me as Asian mm -hmm. and Filipino. Mm -hmm. And if I were a man, mm -hmm. I, they would look at me as the chef, mm -hmm. nothing else. Right. So sometimes they don't even call me chef, they call me by my first name, hey Val. And you know, at first it didn't bother me, but then, you know, one of the guys that work here said, you know, you are a chef, they need to call you a chef. Mm -hmm. They have to respect you. And so it, it's hard to understand that, but as a woman, it makes my job much more difficult. Yes. Because it's like I have to prove more. I have to do more and say more. And the most important question, if you were a customer here at Yamashiro, what are your top three must-order dishes? Top three. You have to try my grandfather's uh, ginger pork ribs. Um, we also have the sea bass and the Chef Val sushi roll. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And we get to try that. Maybe yeah. you get to cook that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So we are here inside the kitchen of Yamashiro, thanks to the hospitality of Chef Val. Hello. And she's actually going to teach me how to make the famous Chef Val roll. Yes, yes. What's in the Chef Val roll? It's basically salmon, tuna, and yellowtail. And mm. My the, favorites. Yeah, so the reason why I made this is a lot of our guests does not like, or they have shellfish allergy. Yeah. And it's hard for them to find a good roll. Okay. So this is what I did without the shellfish, and it's that, and then it's topped with avocado. Uh-huh and then some serrano peppers, which I like spicy stuff, Love, and yes. truffle aioli, spicy mayo, and eel sauce. Oh, wow, so, okay. So okay. what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of your tuna. Okay. I'll yellow, just copy you. Yeah. 
and then your yellow tail here. Then we're gonna roll it okay. tight, push it, pull it back tight. Okay, now the hard part is, there you go. Oh, I think I got it. Yeah, yeah. you did. Usually it's like one, two, three, and that's huh. it. Okay. And then make sure that ends are tight. Yeah. There you go, so yeah. Wrap it. Okay. We're gonna take the makisu again. Okay. And then we're gonna just squeeze the, the sides of it like this. Okay. And then put at the corners so we don't we tuck in the fish. Okay. This is so much fun. I love to shout out at the top of my lungs, I'm the executive chef here. And I just love to invite people because how are they gonna know if you don't tell people where you're at? Mm -hmm. And being a Filipina, being the first Filipina executive chef here at Yamashiro, if no one's gonna shout it out for me, who will? So I've done that and I've invited everybody. I want every Filipino to come here and you know experience what Yamashiro is. And a lot of people don't know where it is. So the people that were putting you down, or still are maybe, um, what do they say when they see all these celebrities, Filipinos and non-Filipinos coming here, wanting to take pictures with you, posting about you? Do they see that? I'm sure they do, but you know, the thing is the old me would have probably tried to search or what are they saying about me, would have probably gone through their, you know, social media to check or ask people what they say, what they say, but for me, it's no longer that. It's no longer trying to get approval from people. I'm content and I'm happy where I'm at. And I have friends and supporters that have been here to support me. There's always going to be noise. And I can't stop people from talking. I can't make people stop from talking about me. It's just trying to understand that this is where I am. And if they want to talk, okay, that's fine. That's okay. You know, and the people that don't like me, if they come here, I still treat them with respect because, you know, this is Yamashiro. This is a place where I'm happy and everyone's welcome. I love that. Yeah. And since you are our opening story for Women's oh, wow. um, History Month, um, because of course, you know, I, I love that you fulfilled your role as a mom and now you're fulfilling your role as a professional woman, yeah. right? Yes. Um, what is women empowerment to you? To me, women empowerment is believing in yourself mm -hmm. and accepting who you are, that you don't have to be somebody that, you know, something that people think that you have to be. A mom is not just staying at home. A mom, we're, we multitask, we know how to do things. We fix the plumbing, you know, we're here when the kids are sick, you know, we go grocery shopping, we do everything. So why not do what people think you can't do? And it's like when, when my parents would say, you know, you're gonna stay be a stay at home mom. I'm like, I don't wanna be a stay at home mom. I wanna I'm a woman. So I can do whatever I need to do. I wanna still fulfill my dreams and my goals. So, you know, being an empowered woman means, you know, being strong enough to stand up for yourself and going for what you want to go for because that's that's what makes you strong. So what is your message to all the women out there watching? My message is that, you know, uh, enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Um enjoy your kids and make time for yourself. I'm saying that because I, you know, I'm, I'm always at work, but it's not, you know, I'll make time, make that time for yourself. Find that time to focus on you because without you, you know, where would we, we be, right? Yeah. How do you practice self-love? I think with everything I've gone through, self-love is accepting who I am and that I'm not always going to be perfect and that's okay. How do you unwind? I unwind by going home watching Netflix. <laughs> I think I've gone through all the Filipino movies on Netflix. Series, yes. Yeah, and um, I used to watch, I watch a lot of TV and I crochet. 
My grandma, oh. yeah, my grandmother taught me how to crochet when I was younger, but I didn't pick it up until I was a mom. Right. And if, because my, I always have to be busy with my hands. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I do. Yeah. Right. What's on the horizon for you? Everyone keeps asking me if I'm going to leave Yamashiro. Yeah. Everyone asks that, but you know what? Are you going to start your own, you know? If I do anything, it's always going to be affiliated with Yamashiro because they have been good to me. They have helped me launch my career. And one thing about Yamashiro is that they allow me to do what I need to do to help market this place. And if anything, what I want to do is open a bakery. Um, that's the love and passion that I have. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I was born in my grandfather's bakery. So I want to pay tribute to him and, and have something that honors him. So hopefully, if anything, that's what I want to do. Right. And that's how you represent by, by cooking, by, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. doing dishes. What is representation to you? Giving yourself and, and expressing yourself to everyone else, you know, giving back and, and being happy and being with people. To me, that, that's what it is.